You know what, I, I need to film a bit of an intro to put to this video. I'll, I'll say this, if you're interested in board repair, I've been asked a lot about, you know, how'd you learn this stuff and all that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach that here, so I'm not trying to bore you to death. <laughs> I hate that this video is gonna be long, but that's the only way that I can teach something so uh, in depth. There was no audio in that first clip because it's just so loud in that mechanical room. But here's the chiller board, and I'm with our chiller tech, Matt, and I'm gonna let him explain right now what the situation is. All right, and talk kind of loud, Matt, since I got the camera okay. over here. So essentially what's happened is somebody has pulled the SD card reader off of the board and the SD card reader is used for data logging on the chiller and also to program the chiller and set programs and just kind of monitor the whole thing if you have issues. It looks like what happened is, so you've got these contact points on the SD card and the way it looks like this is designed is you have pins that solder directly onto the board and they normally go in there, if I can get that in focus, and make contact. You can kind of see that one right there. So what I need to do is desolder these pins, try and get them straightened out, get them fit back into their um, little housings, and then solder this back on the board. And I'm still working out of a loaner van, so I don't have my glue gun, but ideally, we need to get some adhesive, even if it's like double-sided tape or something, to, to stabilize that. How it got pulled off, do, do we know that, man? We have no idea. God almighty, I don't know who would do that. Just somebody, somebody trying to work on a chiller that shouldn't be working on a chiller. And that's why you gotta have chiller techs, right, Matt? That's right. <laughs> pin here is the only one that stayed behind so I need to desolder and get all of those but then there's something else going on and I, I just have to figure it out I'm, I've never messed with one of these sockets but there's this here which looks like it ties into this solder pad and I believe it's somehow related to the lock function on the SD card. So I don't know like what happens when that lock tab is down, maybe it somehow this makes contact. I'm gonna have to look at it and see if I can figure that out. All right, after looking at it closely with the flashlight, I think the lock, which I, I should have, I should have thought about this, but the lock, switch is not going to have anything to do with this that's probably going to be internal to the sd card and it's probably just a contact in there a little sliding contact just makes and breaks some kind of maybe uh maybe power feed to the chip itself so that doesn't matter what this is i think is probably a ground pin maybe for some extra shielding i mean this here the housing which a lot of times is gonna be grounded for shielding reasons, it was soldered in right here. And those pads have been completely ripped off the board and they're now on here. So I'm gonna to have to desolder those and probably solder on a jumper wire right here to this test pad that's right there, which is probably ground. We'll get a multimeter to try to Confirm that, but that's the plan. Now I have a real nice benchtop iron uh, at the house, and that's what I prefer to use. But in the field, this is probably the best option because you can do really heavy duty stuff, big wires with this.
The nice thing about this Milwaukee, and not a lot of people realize this, but they, they take Hayco tips, and that's even a Hayco ceramic element in there, so if it burns out, you can replace it. Um, now, the great thing about Hayco tips is they're such a popular, Hayco is such a popular brand that you can get off-brand Hayco tips, which are dirt cheap. So one tip for this is gonna be like 15 bucks. But you can get a whole pack for like 10 bucks, all kinds of different stuff. And these are for different things. I'm not gonna go into it, but I need one for board work, like this one. This one would be a good one, see that? That chisel, you know, like a one to two millimeter chisel is what I want for, for this pin layout. And you gotta get way, way smaller if you're gonna try to do like a surface mount chip. Well, there there are other techniques there, but I'll, I won't go into it, but anyways. Okay, so I'm just gonna start desoldering these. I gotta show this because it's so cool, Matt. Matt just showed me that someone has made like a pack out case for that iron. Man, that's incredible. I would love to get into 3D printing, but I, I just got too many hobbies going on at the moment. That's my case. <laughs> that is sweet. All right, let me talk a bit about board work and what I'm going to be doing here. So here's the deal. You have to keep this tip clean. And I prefer to use brass wool because it doesn't heat shock the tip like a wet sponge. The problem with the heat shock is it starts to affect that nickel plating. And once that nickel plating is gone, your tip is uh, toast. So I'm dipping the tip in there like this to clean it because once it builds up carbon from the flux, that carbon acts like an insulator. Jeez, man, somebody keep flushing that commode. <laughs> that carbon acts like an insulator and prevents the heat from transferring into these pins. Now here's the other factor though. When you, when you dip it into here, you're cleaning it completely. So you're stripping off the solder, but you need a certain amount of solder on that because you gotta make what's called a heat bridge. You have to have a way for the heat to transfer into that joint. Otherwise, you'll never get the pin off, especially if you're on like a ground trace. Now this here might be easy because these are you know really small traces, but when you start to get on a really big trace, if I can find one, that is ridiculously important. You gotta have a real nice heat bridge. Okay, so what you're gonna see, and I might speed it up a bit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a bit of solder on here and I'm gonna start moving down. And if I build up too much carbon, I'll clean it and then get on a bit more solder. That, that's the technique. All right, so we're hot enough now. One thing with this iron is that it will overheat if you don't keep it in contact. I'm using these goofy ass tweezers because half my stuff is still in my old van. It's very annoying. I've been without that van for like, whew, going on maybe two months or more. I don't know. It feels like forever. Maybe it's only been a couple weeks, but drive shaft snapped on it. Honestly, almost killed me. Now, I need to clean off this pad material that has pulled off the board. I'll be honest, this, this is a tough repair, but chiller boards are expensive. All right, so there's that. Another thing that this brass wool works great for is swiping off like little SM, SMD components and crap like that. No. 
by the way, I'm I'm going more in depth than I than I normally would on the electronic stuff. I, I just get a lot of questions about it. Uh, you know, how can I learn this stuff and that kind of thing. And so I'm trying to teach it a bit more than I normally do. So um, I did forget something. I'm, I wanted to make sure I have these pads clean. So as I'm putting back in the pins, I can like match it up, oops, match it up and start making sure everything's at the right angle. So let me show how to clean these, um, these pins here. Now I'm using a liquid rosin flux and with boards and stuff, you have to use a non-corrosive flux. You can't be using plumbing flux or anything like that. You have to use electronics specific flux. Anytime I have like a liquid flux, I like putting it in a fingernail polish bottle <laughs> that I stole from my daughter. But I, I asked her <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> Anyways, um, you're gonna coat it like this and then um, th what that's going to do is allow this solder to flow back onto the pads like normal. Um, and it's one way that you can work on, say, like a chip is to get the solder already on the pads and then just flow the solder onto the pins. Whereas if you're sending a board through like a wave solder or something, these pads are going to be dry. Okay. So what we're doing is prepping the pads as for like a manual installation. The way this was done at the factory is most likely wave soldering. So I'm just going over, see how they're, the solder is forming back to the pads now. We had a bunch of like sharp edges and it was all nasty. And now they're all perfect, ready to take the pins. But here's the new board, and that's that's what I want Matt to explain here in a second of why we have a new board and we're still fixing this old one. All right, last thing. Oh, I've been asked about like grounding straps. Okay, let me see this bag here. The you know you get boards and they come in either a pink bag or this mylar, and it's anti-static. Okay. And I do think you need that for shipping. Um, I don't wear a grounding strap, and this is not a hill I'm, I'm going to die on. But with the boards I deal with and with modern designs, they are shielded pretty well. Um, I have never damaged a board. You know, the, the issue is and the fear is that static electricity, so you, know, you know, you're walking across your carpet, you go grab a board and you shock the chip. Um, I make sure that I've touched something to make sure I've got no static and from there I just don't wear a grounding strap. Uh, modern boards are a lot more resilient and um, if, if someone disagrees with that I'm, I'm not going to debate that point because uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a matter of opinion. Okay. Now, uh, Matt, so why, why are we doing this? Let's get a better explanation. So what we we're doing it for is we need to get the programming off of this board onto an SD card. So all the set points, all the sales data and all that is in this board. But in order to replace the board, you have to pull that out and put it on an SD card. Once mm -hmm. you get it on the SD card, you can then install your new board, then flash the new software onto the board from another SD card that is supplied with the board mm. right there. Okay. Then once you get the software onto the board, that is when you then take the SD card that was from, that you flashed from this old board, you slide it in there and you flash the new board with the programming from that SD card. All right. So they want, now correct me if I'm wrong here, but th they wanted the board replaced because of this damage. That's correct. But the board can't even be replaced unless you can pull the programming or 
the other option would be to pay JCI God knows what, right? Yep. To to hook in somewhere else, maybe that USB or, or somewhere somewhere we don't have the ability to hook into. And um, I mean, God knows what they would charge for that. So what we're trying to do is just get the customer uh, up and going. And um, it is really looking good at this point. I mean, all of these look like it's gonna work out and I can, I can make these work. So the thing about Kynar wire, it's such a great, uh, wire wrapping is another word for it. It's such a great thing for circuit boards and like uh, manually making auxiliary traces. I can do that with this, but I gotta, I just gotta make sure it doesn't short out on anything. So that, that, that's the problem. It's, it's light stranded like Kynar, but it has no insulation, which is a real bummer. Here's plan B, and now that uh, I'm looking at it, I think it'll work. So I can push this back even a bit further, I think, than it is right now, and it's still going to contact the SD card pad. But what I'm going to have to do is either just run a solder bridge across to make the connection or cut a very small piece. So I, I think we're good. I don't think we need the Kynar. Everything feels very tight and looks like it's making contact. Alignment's perfect. Those are going to be tough to solder without my benchtop iron, but I can make that work. Now it's time to flow it. Matt actually saved me on that one because he noticed on the new board I was putting in this last pin. This one sits in sideways, and I had it where that contact point was, was facing up. Okay, so it turns out that in the unlocked position, this contact needs to be grounded. So I'm, you know, um, this is kind of mangled and I'm, I'm not gonna be able to make the lock function work, but I can ensure that it's basically always unlocked because no matter what, uh, these contacts are gonna be connected. I think we're good on that. Now, I've got to start thinking about repairing these pads. So, the truth is, this could just be a mount. But because there's a test pad here, uh, there's, there's a real good chance that this ties into ground for shielding purposes. Now, technically, I do need, it would be nice to have both of them. But this one is toast. Like, I don't even have the test pad. Went ahead and applied some flux there. All right. By the way, electric electronic solder is not normal solder don't ever use normal solder so a lot of times it'll have like a rosin core this is the diameter i like for board work and see 60 40. i think i think that's 60 percent lead yeah, 60 percent tin anyways it's a lead tin don't ever do board work with lead free solder that stuff is garbage I'm going to be using this tool now. It's called flush cutters to uh, cut some things. And it's really great for cutting the leads off of through hole components. Let me show you something. These are not normal cutters. They're not like diagonal cutters or any other cutter that, that you've been using out in the field. What they do is they make a nice flat point, like non sharp point on leads and, and everything else. Because when you're cutting the leads off the, you know, off the back on something like this, it'll leave them razor sharp and you can't cut close to the board. So anyways, that's, that's what this little tool is. But let me show you the contrast here with the pinch cutter. And th this is like your dikes. It's like, every, you know, every normal cutter, just a pinch cutter, see? And that leaves like this 
super sharp knife blade at the end. Snip that off right there. There's a new pad. I'll work on this one now. Now this one's gonna be tricky. All all of this has been tricky, but it's not gonna short out if we go straight up and over. The only thing it's gonna contact is plastic. And even if it were to go over here, uh, these pins do not stick past the openings. Now here's what's tricky. What I need to do is, well, no, no, that'll be fine. I'm not going to, well, shit. Yeah, no, it's fine. I'm going to put the wire here unless, well, here's the thing. I don't know if this test pad just comes off of here and goes nowhere. That That's the problem. So yeah, it, it is going to be as tricky as I thought. Because even if I'm anchored here with my jumper, if this pad, like wherever this trace goes, which is really tough to figure out on a double-sided board, this may or may not be double-sided, but um, I'm sure it's got crap on the back. I mean, that's basically all. Might have, yeah, it's got SMDs on the back. It's most likely a double, at least a double layer board. So we have traces running through two entirely separate layers. Very hard to, to, to trace out without a schematic, but if we go over like this and down, it connects me here, but I'm not sure if this goes anywhere. It may be that this is the main connection and that's what's feeding off God knows where. And this is only a test bed that dead ends right here. So we gotta figure that out now probably off the new board with the meter. You know, I just noticed this. I don't, I don't know anything about fiber optics, uh, to be honest, but these look like fiber optic ports, which is really cool. Not sure what they're used for, but man, that's awesome. Here's the new board because I need to, I need to start using a meter to try to find out if there's a pad back here that this pin, like I can run a jump or two. Now, <clears throat> you gotta watch out for this, but a lot of these modern boards, especially in equipment, have this conformal coating. You can see it here, but it's like a some kind of poured urethane, something like that. Um, and when you're probing around, you gotta make sure you have really, really sharp needles to get through that i really like these fluke probes right here and uh you can even uh like use a bit of sand cloth to sharpen them up even more but they they tend to be a lot better than the field piece ones because they don't bend on you i mean the, these are some of the best probes out there as far as piercing stuff i've showed this before but these are so sharp you really need to keep them in vinyl tubing because uh Getting one of these up the fingernail does not feel nice. Ask me how I know that. What we're gonna do here, uh, cause yeah. So after use, the, the tips get rolled over. I don't even know if you can see that, but we're just gonna do like this and uh, sand them up, get them real sharp. In case it wasn't already clear what happened here. So, you know, this SD card clicks in there and locks in like normal. But what somebody did is probably think this was a flap and they literally just tried to like get the SD card out by pulling it down. Now you can look at it until it's not that, but yeah, somebody was working on this chiller that should not, not have been. And you know, that, that just happens, you know. People try to do as much as they can, but they end up getting in over their head. You know, it's just, stuff happens. But anyways, let me show you something. So Matt got me thinking this through better than trying to trace out stuff on the bottom. Should not have jumped that far ahead. What this is, I should have just paid attention. Matt was checking to see if it was part of the ground. Now, it may be part of the ground. Um, 
and it is, you have to watch out on boards. Sometimes there's high and low grounds, but in this case, like this ground is part of this housing circuit, okay? Which that all makes sense. But what this is for is you'll notice the way this card is now, I go in here and I touch my pin and I got nothing. So that is the locked position on the SD card. When the SD card is unlocked, we're gonna stick it in here. And now this pin is just grounded. So assuming this connection is good, we can do multiple things here. I mean, we can just connect this pin straight up to this housing. So we, we, have, we have quite a few options here and we don't need to run any jumpers. Now this is gonna be pretty difficult to solder without my bench top iron. Um, remember, well, let me first say, you see I've got the Mylar bag here and even though I'm not uh, crazy about grounding straps, I don't go crazy with all that. To get the angle I want, I've got my jacket down here. Now one thing I'm not gonna do is put a board on like a felt jacket. <laughs> I try to be smart. So I've got the Mylar bag holding it at this angle. Now remember, ideally I would just use a fine point iron for this. Um, but remember how I was talking about techniques for doing like SMDs, like these little teeny pins. And the idea is you use just enough solder to flow the pin, but not enough that you make a bridge. And so what I'm gonna do is use this big tip and chances are I am going to touch multiple pads. And so I, you know, I'm just going to go through and if I get a bridge, I'm going to have to clean that tip and just keep removing solder until that bridge is gone. But because I'm going to like kind of run down the line here, I need to put a nice little line of flux down here. And one thing that flux does um, is it causes the surface tension of the solder to become greater so it it makes the solder like want to pull up on the pad rather than like try to jump to another point um and so i gotta flux this as well and then i gotta do a bit of a like little jump up to here i'll probably do that after that's finished all right so i'm gonna start with a clean tip, fresh solder, and I'm gonna go a little bit lighter on the solder until, until I realize I need more, and then I'm gonna go from there. And they're hard to do because they're still bent. Now, another key to not making a solder bridge is making sure that your iron is hot, not to leave the little nipples that are left behind when the solder is not quite hot and it tries to follow the iron on the way out. That one's flowing nicely. Now one thing I will do is use like a jeweler's loop after this to inspect each joint and just make sure they look right. I'll go ahead and just flow whatever's left there, I think. I don't even know if there's a pad. I don't know if you can see, but I'm, I'm taking out some of those sharp peaks I was talking about where the solder follows the iron away from the board. Okay, those are looking pretty decent. I'm gonna put on a nice little glob of solder here. Get up underneath in there. Oh, wiped that off the board. Okay, I'm gonna have to change angles and positions to make this one work, but that's fine. I did miss a few because they're so damaged, like the the 
the pads that you would normally solder on these pins are like up off the board. Um, is, you know, so this, this is not ideal, especially with this iron, but you can see where I got a solder bridge there. So I just cleaned the tip and now I'm gonna try to take it away. If I can, if not, I need to use braid. Yeah, let me show you another technique. Oh, the real thing to use for this is um, called desoldering braid and I don't have any with me again back in my shop so um, I'm just gonna use this stranded wire and the idea here is this wire when it gets hot enough it's gonna want to take some of that solder and so I'm gonna try to draw that solder up into that wire and let it actually remove getting it out of there but it's being difficult might have to cut okay now I'm gonna cut a fresh cut a fresh piece you can see what I drew out of there let's do it again Now it's true that I'm removing solder, but I have to add solder. <laughs> it's kind of kind of counterintuitive. I have to add solder to the tip to get it to get the wire hot enough. And honestly, if I had my Heiko desoldering tool, this would be done yesterday. Okay. I have to add enough solder to get that wire hot enough to where it wants to take solder down here. I'm getting real close to getting that, that out of there. Okay, I think I got it. All right, so that's it. So it's a, it's a goofy way to clean up, clean up pads. If you have like a desoldering tool, that can be a better option. I've got a situation right here where this pad is this pin is so damaged it's so high away it's where those those pins were stacked that making a solder bridge is gonna just add too much solder and end up bridging this so you get yourself a pair of, you know like a strand of wire you pull down one hair and you go in here give that flux give this more flux I like uh, more flux the better, uh, even though that's not always true, but this board has just got to last to get the stuff off it. All right, so I'll get this lined up. It's hard to see, I really need um, like a desktop magnifier is what I need. My eyes just can't quite see the way they used to, but I think I got it. Now, this is where the flush cutters really come in handy because they have this super sharp point. Now I can get in here and trim this away so it's not shorting out on that body. Just like that. like that right there okay all right same thing here I'm going to uh, just bend this so that it looks like it's gonna work add some flux
you know what i i need to film a bit of an intro to put to this video i'll, I'll say this if you're interested in board repair i've been asked a lot about you know how'd you learn this stuff and all that well i'm i'm, I'm trying to teach that here so i'm not trying to bore you to death <laughs> i hate that this video is going to be long but that's the only way that i can teach something so uh in depth as you know, th this is a pretty in-depth repair, what I'm doing right here. So, I apologize for the length if it's boring. Just uh, just watch the next video on uh, normal HVAC stuff. <laughs> this, is, this is down the rabbit hole HVAC stuff right here. Okay, so I got that done. Now, my last bridge. I need a bridge right here. Let me do that now. I'm not going to show that. That's going to be a hard angle, but you get the idea. Okay, so there's the jumper there. I soldered it down there to tack it, bent it up here, soldered it to the housing. Now, the lock doesn't work anymore, but it, it does feel like it goes in there nice and solid. So, we need to get this board reinstalled, and then we're going to test it. All right, I'm gonna see if I can shout over this chiller and this mechanical room. You're gonna put in the SD card, boards back in. All right, SD card is in. All right, so initially the SD card wasn't being picked up, but that's because the board probably tried to pull it before it was installed. So we have power on the board just put the card in. So we power cycled it and now it is it is reading it. So it's seeing the card. Alright so the chiller currently says right protect and what that means or the logic there is this pin here goes high. And we've got logic voltage there. That, that's a real common board logic voltage uh, 3.2, 3.3. So we need to make sure that this pin right here or this circuit is pulled to ground so we got to find out where that 3.3 is and uh pull it down to ground this may be the resistor that is responsible for that bolt sense uh circuit so i'm gonna try to pull that through this microamps dc uh, with my meat 60 microamps, that's, you know, that's reasonable for logic. I've got no idea whether you could even hear anything I was saying in that mechanical room, but when this pin is high, it means that the card can't be written to. Now the test pad that I was interested in is already buried underneath of here. This is the new board, by the way, which is why I'm I'm, tra I'm tracing it out here because there's broken traces on the old one. But well, I'm not gonna over the camera. Turns out that we've got a test pad here that is directly connected. Uh, to that pin and I already made sure that I'm not getting upstream of the resistor. If you do that, you're gonna fry the, if there's no other protecting resistor, you're gonna fry the output on that chip. So this, this point right here needs to be pulled down to ground. So if we solder something here and find somewhere to jump over to ground, then we should be able to force this board into always thinking the chip is not, or the SD card is not right protected. Now that was the new board I was showing. This is the old one. So this is what, where we need to make the connection. Scrape that off, run the jumper. Got another problem here and that is, this here is starting to break loose. All right, so, one thing, even though these pads look shiny, that can be deceptive because of that conformal coating. So you need to you need to scrape those as well. You can see the the stuff coming off that. You gotta get those real clean. Going on my 
Flux them. this worked then this point here should be grounded and it is I meant to put this tape on first but forgot it but because this isn't kind of like I was talking about earlier I'm just gonna do this and it'll, it'll definitely be good enough this board's not staying in place Got the board in. I did not fix that little jumper, and I don't know if that has anything to do with what's going on. Sometimes it's power cycles, sometimes you know, it's a connection, but we lost our back one. So this bowl right there is out. You used to, to do this on old TVs, sometimes you still can, but with a light, you can see the screen. Now we're normal. That fixed that problem, although our screen is out. All right, I got it buried right now. Oh, yeah. All right, Matt's going to try to explain the process here. So, what were you saying? We got the new party. You hook up the board as it already is. Make sure all your jumpers are the same. You put your new SD card in there that's got the program in, on the SD card from the factory. You change your switch number four so the board will take the program. Uh, then you turn it on and let it load. The screen is on now and um, just looking at the board layout, this looks like it is related to the, uh, the backlight and uh, maybe some other functions there, some, some higher power functions. So I'm willing to bet that this being broken like this was causing a power feed to be missing to that screen. So if we wanted to use this board, I, I think we could have just needed to fix that. All right, I might go ahead and wrap this up, but I have to look it in the manual on this F1 after we eliminated some other things indicates that this factory SD card is defective somehow. Matt had a good idea here. He found an old uh, SD card for the, uh, I guess, the original programming. He put that in, and now that, that is working. We're now loading on the old program, so it erased the flash and now it's free flash. Alright, here we go. Our SD card is in now. So that's the one we made. Alright, it worked. Brought everything back in. Perfect. 